Imagine having the world's most advanced AI in your pocket for free. That's exactly what happened this week with the release of Llama 3.1. But is it really as good as they claim? Let's put it to the test. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're diving deep into Meta's latest AI breakthrough, Llama 3.1. We'll be comparing their new 405 billion parameter model against the current kings of AI, GPT-40 and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Get ready for some mind-blowing revelations. Meta has thrown down the gauntlet with this open source powerhouse, aiming to rival the likes of GPT-4 and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. But what makes it so special? Well, imagine having a supercomputer's brain at your fingertips, free to use, modify, and build upon. That's the promise of Llama 3.1. Now, let's get down to business. We're not just going to take Meta's word for it. We're putting Llama 3.1 through the ringer. We'll be testing three key areas, coding abilities, reasoning skills, and creative tasks. This will give us a well-rounded view of what Llama 3.1 can really do. Will the open source underdog come out on top? Or will the proprietary giants maintain their dominance? The prompt that we are using is to create a snake game. We have Llama 3.1405 in the bottom left. We have Claude 3.5 Sonnet in the top left, um, which has already completed its code. And then we have GPT-40 on the right, which just completed its code as well. I am not going to be judging this on speed as both Claude and GPT-40 are housed in massive centers of compute power, whereas Llama doesn't have nearly as much compute power. Llama 3.1's code is up first. We're gonna run that. There's an error. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this take it back over, paste it back in. I asked it to go ahead and fix that bit. So we will see um, once it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this because it already gave me the fix that it said. So I'm gonna go paste that back in, run it. And it seems to be working fine. So it did get the first one wrong, but with a quick fix, it's working great. So now we're gonna be going over to GPT-4 and it's it's looking to be pretty good. Um, I just ran into a wall, it stopped. I suck at snakes, so forgive me for not hitting the little treat there. Uh, there we go, yep, looking good. Now we'll go over to Claude. This is Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Looking good, really fast. Yep, working perfectly fine. So obviously with Llama 3.1, it did get that error. Neither of the other two had an error. Uh, they were single shot. However, with a quick uh, copy and paste of the error, Llama 3.1 nailed it. It was perfectly fine. Chat GPT 4.0 actually surprised me. It was very well done. It handled movement really, really well. It handled uh, object collision really well. It had two separate scores. It had the high score. It had the regular score. And it actually kept the score over the entire instance of the game. So that was really, really, really cool. It was by far the best creation. And I will say, Llama 3.1 after the fix was a better generation than what we got from 3.5 Sonnet. So the next prompt we are using is to create a Tetris game. This is Llama 3.1, obviously sped up, and we're now copying it and putting it into our VS code. I'm gonna run it, and it's pretty messed up. It's off center. I tried to use WASD left right, you know, all the arrows, nothing really worked. So we're just gonna go ahead and get on over to GPT-40, gave it the same prompt. We're gonna speed this up to go ahead and get to the GUI itself. So yeah, it looks great. I mean, all of the controls are responding perfectly fine. They're going down when I hold down the down arrow. They're moving perfectly fine when I I uh, want them to move, the line just disappeared. Yeah, this is a perfect Tetris game. So now we will move on to Claude. I'm gonna run the code. So I put in the same, the same prompt as before, make a Tetris game using Python, use Pygame for the graphics. It's generating the code. Gonna speed up again, make sure we can get to the game, the GUI. All right, paste that in, run it, and um, so it's not falling on its own volition. 
I am forcing it to move down, but also it's not moving all the way to the left or all the way to the right of the screen. It's just um, there's like a invisible barrier there, which is kind of weird. New blocks aren't falling. Yeah, this isn't a complete generation fail. Yeah, so looking at these side by side, ChatGPT obviously takes the cake again, which is really surprising me. I have to be completely honest. I haven't used ChatGPT for any type of coding for quite some time. I've been using Claude, but there has been some feedback from the larger community, larger AI development community, talking about how Claude seems to be lobotomized. That once they released the app for Android, usage skyrocketed. So they rolled back, dumbed it down a bit, probably to save on inference costs. And um, that's that's might be what we're seeing here. But whatever the case, Llama 3, again, did not do great. Claude did not do great. And it looks like the winner out of this entire uh, video at this point, ChatGPT. All right, now we're going over to our first math and reasoning question. John is twice as old as Mark. In five years, the sum of their ages will be 65. How old is each person now? Let's see how Llama 3.1 does with math and reasoning. It's close. I think we'll give it to it. It seemed to have made some decision on the rounding. It's fine. We'll go ahead and give that to Llama 3.1. Now we're heading over to GPT 4.0. Um, again, this is correct. This is exactly correct. GPT-40 got it down to decimals, and that's 100% correct. And now we're heading over to Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and Claude got this correct as well. I like Claude's answer the best. Very concise, fast, very good. Next question, math reasoning, is how many R's are in the word strawberry? This is a tough one for models to get due to how tokenizers work and the number of tokens in the word strawberry. Usually they all fail unless they've been trained on this specific question. So there are two R's in the word strawberry. Incorrect. That's a fail. How many R's are there in the word strawberry? Two R's. Incorrect for GPT-4 as well. And we'll go ahead with Claude. There are two R's in the word strawberry. That is incorrect. We're not going to be judging based on the strawberry question because everybody got that incorrect. However, if we look at the first question we asked, I personally liked Anthropic's answer because it was the most concise. It did round up correctly. It gave what is generally accepted as the right answer as the right answer. However, GPT-40 gave the most specific technically correct answer which is broken down into the decimals so judging by this probably go with gpt40 because it did answer the question that was given to it in the most technically correct way which i have to give some kudo points to that however we look at llama i think i can understand the logic that llama was giving because we did say that John is twice the age of Mark, but it's technically not correct. If you look at the end of the question, it was in five years, their sum will equal 65. So right now, two people, five years each, that's 55 years. That's the sum of their age. If you look at Lama's answer, it's 54. So out of the three, again, I'm going to have to say Lama 3.1 is the least performant. I mean, I'd give it to it because it's kind of correct and it probably just rounded down. But if you look at GPT-4, 36.67, in what world do you round that down to 36? I'm trying to give it kudo points. I'm trying to give it the benefit of the doubt here, but it's incorrect. It's close, but no cigar. So GPT-4, again, takes this one. All right, now we are on the creative writing and planning test. The prompt is you are tasked with organizing a week-long summer camp for teenagers. The camp includes various activities such as sports, arts and crafts, and educational workshops. How would you create a schedule that balances these activities, keeps the campers engaged, and ensures their safety and well-being? The first one up is Llama 3.1. First, it starts out with pre-camp planning. I really like that. Actually plans what it's going to do first. Then it does the schedule structure. So it's creating a daily routine. I really like that as well. Then it gives you a sample schedule for the Monday out of the week. That's killer. Very, very good job. Safety and well-being to ensure the camper 
ensure safety and well-being. That was the end of the question, ensure safety and well-being. So it answered that as well. And then some things to consider, flexibility and adaptability. Amazing answer. Very well done. So GPT-4.0 is up next. Super, super fast. No pre-planning there. It goes right into the entire week of schedule, but it's not as broken down. If you notice the times are kind of varied and a little bit all over the place, it's not as completely broken down as Llama 3.1, I think. Uh, right now we're on to Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And again, kind of, it does some pre-planning here and then it just gives a schedule too, a little too concise for my liking. Doesn't it give a lot of variability and different ways to do things? but still pretty good. So if I'm looking at all of these, Claude's is very similar to Llama 3.1. They both do some kind of pre-planning before they actually get into the schedule. Chat GPT, on the other hand, doesn't do that. Chat GPT jumps right into the week-long summer camp and each of the days are slightly varied when i'm looking at ChatGPT, it's actually much more broken down than the other two because the other two kind of just gave a general idea over what each of the days should be whereas ChatGPT fully broke down the first day welcome and orientation the day six right before the day the final day and then departure day yeah i have to say looking both at claude and llama 3.1 they kind of answer in the same format their answers aren't bad but gpt 40 really digs in and seems to try to get to what the user actually wants to give to instead of just a high level overview with some things to consider so I have to give this to GPT-40 as well. All right, now to our last test. It's the interactive presentation test. So this combines a bit of the creative writing, um, a bit of the coding, um, and a bit of the reasoning as well. The prompt is create an interactive HTML slash JavaScript presentation on the health implications of coffee. Use as much data as possible. Put everything in one standalone HTML file. So as you can see, Llama 3.1 is doing this perfectly fine. All right, Llama has completed. We'll stop that um, copy. We're going to test it immediately. Heading over, pasting it in. This is not a Python code. We'll have to make HTML. There we go. Paste it in save it so this is pretty good three different tabs it's interactive you hover you see the different data points it's all there yeah this is a very very solid interactive presentation html5 presentation can't complain gpt40 is up next yeah it's much more basic it has three drop downs and a single graph and then some links to some references very simple very basic uh now we're at claude claude has artifacts so claude's going to show this directly in the browser we're not going to have to go paste this code anywhere we'll, we'll be able to use this directly in the browser so let's take a look solid very good, very good. Next, previous buttons, it's an actual presentation, right? Ah, that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful charts. Very, very well done. This is solid with a conclusion. Yeah, I would say Claude had the best one here. By far, there's no question about it. Claude, then Llama 3.1, and then for the first time so far in the video, ChatGPT would come up last. All right, now that we are done with the more subjective real use case scenario, let's go ahead and dive into how Llama 3.1 performs in official benchmarks as these standardized tests give us a more objective view of its capabilities. According to Meta's own benchmarks, Llama 3.1 is showing some impressive numbers. It scored 88.6 on the MMLU test, which measures general knowledge and reasoning, and that's getting pretty close to human expert level. Even more impressive is its score of 95.2 on the zero scrolls slash quality benchmark. This test evaluates understanding of long text sequences, suggesting Llama 3.1 has strong reading comprehension skills. But don't just take Meta's word for it. Third party evaluations are backing up these claims. Scale AI's tests show that Llama 3.1 is not just competing with, but in some areas, outperforming closed source models. In the coding benchmark, 
Llama 3.1 ranks fourth with a score of 1123. It's outperforming models like Gemini 1.5 Pro and Claude 3 Opus, and it's only slightly behind GPT-4. Even more impressive, Llama 3.1 cased the top spot in instruction following. With a score of 90.35, it's beating out Claude 3.5 Sonic and GPT-4.0, which is a significant achievement for an open source model and opens up a lot of opportunities for agentic frameworks. However, it's important to note what we just saw in the actual real world use case scenarios that we ran it through. It didn't compete and it didn't outperform. It was the worst performer. So that begs the question if maybe the data that Llama 3.1 is trained on might be hyper focused on these benchmarks and might not have the best real world data, but we've seen some fascinating results today. Llama 3.1 shows impressive performance in official benchmarks, often rivaling or even surpassing proprietary models like GPT-4 and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. However, our uh, real-world tests tell a different story. In practical applications, uh, from coding tasks to creative writing, uh, Llama 3.1 consistently underperformed compared to its closed source competitors. This disparity raises important questions about the nature of AI benchmarks and their relation to real world performance. Are we perhaps seeing a model that's overly optimized for specific tests at the expense of general capability? The promise of Llama 3.1, a powerful open source AI accessible to all is exciting, but our tests suggest there's still a gap between this promise and current reality. While it may not be dethroning the AI giants just yet, its strong benchmark performance shows the potential of open source models. As development continues, we may see future iterations that truly challenge the status quo. One thing's for sure, the world of AI is changing fast, and we'll be here to keep you updated every step of the way. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.